And with that, it's over to Weon's Bureau Chief Anshul Vora in Srinagar for a discussion to make sense of the Baramula attack and, of course, those ongoing tensions between India and Pakistan. It's over to you, Anshul. Thanks very much, Aisha, and a good evening to all our viewers. We're coming to you live from Srinagar, and I'm standing in front of a massive, beautiful chinar tree. This time of the year, Srinagar is usually bustling with, uh, with, with tourists, I beg your pardon. And uh, this time around, of course, there's been this unrest 85 days uh, plus, and the unrest continues. Though I have to say that over the last 10 days, I've been getting in and out of Srinagar. Situation in Kashmir seems to be getting better. Uh, that despite the tensions on the border, and we'll come to that part in a bit, uh, even though the schools and shops in Srinagar are shut, but there is more movement uh, on the streets. People are getting out, more cars are moving out, and the evening after six, more shops are opening. Uh, why is that? Tensions on the border, does that not have an impact in Srinagar? Is something that we will raise with our guests. But let's first talk about what happened last night, and in this atmosphere, the size that it obtained. Last night at 10.30 in Baramula, there was a terrorist attack. We've been told three to four terrorists in pairs of, uh, in two pairs, if it was four, in fact. That specific number, though, has not yet been given. Attacked the 46 Rashtre rifles at 10.30 last night. Firing went on for about two hours in Baramula district. And uh, we hear that they had crossed the Jhelum and come in and that they also had local support in Baramula district. And early this morning, we were there at about 8. The combing operations were called off. One BSF Jawan, unfortunately, has been killed and two injured, though the terrorists fled. So what does that mean? Does that mean that our forces at the end of the day are unprepared? Or the fact that if you're a terrorist and you attack, you've got the first fire advantage. All of that we would like to put in perspective uh, with our guests. We've got a senior diplomat joining us and also uh, Colonel Sharma to bring us that defense uh, perspective. But before that, let's uh, bring you up to date with uh, the other development as far as India and Pakistan is concerned. Uh, now, uh, NSA, India's NSA, Ajit Doval spoke to Pakistan's Sartaj Aziz and now both seem to be making an effort to calm the tensions. Both, though, are seen as hawks in their specific countries. What does it all mean? Let's introduce, uh, bring in our guest there to analyze. Colonel Sharma, to you first. I'm here on Ground Zero. I'd like to ask you, why is it that the terrorists could manage to kill our BSF Jaman and injure two others, but they managed to uh, uh, flee the scene? So our forces could not manage to arrest these uh, boys. Anshal, I think the uh, answer is quite simple. As you said, uh, the terrorists always have this advantage of uh, first strike. They choose uh, the place and timing of their choice. A, uh, B, uh, when there is a certain amount of uh, support available from the local population, the task becomes that much easier. Now, for the security forces, it's, it's, it's actually quite, quite difficult to remain alert 24-7, 365 days a year. And uh, there would be lapses. Uh, and uh, as I said, if you have a certain amount of local support, if you have some people who are on the lookout for you, then the task for the terrorists becomes easier to find gaps, to find loopholes, and to find chinks in the armor, so to say. So having the first, the advantage uh, to fire first, I would always give the first round to the terrorists. But I think what is heartening is that we responded uh, pretty well this time. Our quick reaction teams were uh, on the ball, and they did not allow any further damage. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, one BSF Jawan died and the other one got injured. But I think that was more as uh, part of the overall melee that ensued and not uh, a strike as such. The uh, terrorists did not succeed in causing any more damage. Uh, right. I, I would think it's, a, uh, it's an even round. Uh, right, sir, but I like to tell you that I was at the spot uh, early in the morning and uh, on, on the right-hand side w would be the Jhelum and tall trees and on the left-hand side, uh, the, a neighborhood full of civilians. And it is, of course, from the right-hand side that the f uh, uh, grenades were launched into uh, 46 uh, Rashtray rifles and it didn't seem like... Uh, it didn't seem like there was an issue if the forces would fire back and uh, or at least get out to catch hold of these boys. Uh, why 
it, would you not say that it is at least in some amount uh, a, a failure? There, of course, at this time should be of any other time immense security presence, and one has to be uh, security forces should be on immense alert. Even if they are on that high alert, why is it that they kill our soldiers, the terrorists? Uh, they kill the soldiers and then they're gone. So I wouldn't give uh, a clean shit, of, even in the case of Uri, which, which happened earlier and started this entire uh, process. There was definitely uh, certain lapses that we let them come inside the camp, regardless of the fact that the terrain is very difficult, regardless of the fact that they had some local sympathizers. Um, at the end of the day, I think we do have to look inwards and uh, figure out why and how it happened. That was Uri, and unfortunately, uh, there was a gasoline dump over there which caught fire and caused a lot of damage. This time around, it wasn't so bad. In fact, uh, we managed to repulse them and retaliate pretty quickly. Uh, your answer is to, okay, fine, if they have the first uh, strike, uh, why could we thereafter not get the better of them? Uh, but you did partly answer that question, Anchal, when you said that there are, there are locals around. Uh, we are always concerned about collateral damage. We don't want to hurt the civilians. We don't want to hurt anybody innocent. And not at this point in time, particularly when uh, there ought to be rest restraint on our part. Uh, you know, you kill one innocent guy and there will be health to pay. So uh, right. that could be part of the reason why we were a little uh, restrained. Otherwise, uh, maybe under usual circumstances, the quick reaction teams at the army always maintained that such camps would have gone after them, uh, gone after them a little more vigorously. Right, sir. So let me just uh, uh, bring in our diplomat guests. And sir, thanks very much for being with us. But uh, before I ask you uh, uh, some questions, uh, if you'd allow me to play what the SSP of Baramula told me, and that's quite similar to what, what Colonel Sharma has had to say. Uh, once we cover up the defense aspect of the story, we'll move on uh, to diplomacy. Let's play uh, what the SSP of Baramula told me earlier in the day. All right, seems that we're just going to bring that up for uh, you. Uh, um, and we're just going to play that in a bit. Also a report coming up from Pakistan. So let me go to the diplomat on the panel tonight. Sir, thanks very much for speaking to Vion. I'd like to ask you, do you think that the media got a bit more tense than it should have? I mean, for after all, this is a conflict zone and such incidents do keep happening. Uh, but do you think we played it up a bit more than we should have? And would you say that is because we all seem to be on the edge at the moment as we see both the armies, so to say, preparing for war? Mr. Nath, Mr. Nath, sir, this is for you, sir, Mr. Jha. Mr. Jha. Hello? Hello, is it for me, the question? Yes, sir, please go ahead. Yeah, can you please yes, sir. repeat the question? I thought not for me. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Could you just tell me the question again, please, if you don't mind? All right, sir. I right, sir. I'm. I'm s yes, please. Just repeat it, please, huh? Yes, sir. The question is: Do you think that the media overreacted? Because at the moment we seem to be on the edge. Do you think we overplayed the Baramula incident? Would you say these are incidents that, that occur often and we all seem to be on the edge because we're hearing the, this rhetoric from uh, both the armies that they're, uh, you know, working on the war preparedness? You know, I, I don't think we overreacted at all. I'll tell you why. Because, uh, the, because first of all, the events that have happened in the last few days are still of very recent origin and in rapid sequence, number one. Uh, secondly, for the, 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 uh, this Hafiz Saeed's remarks the other day at a public meeting, which we all heard on our TV here, TV sets here, that India will soon know, will have a thousand cuts again. We, 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 that we, that we, will, we will let India know what is a, a kind of a surprise attack and uh, this 
So, uh, so, so after that, this mm -hmm. probably was one manifestation of it because, of course, aided by the Pakistan army. Otherwise, they can't they can't cross over at all. So, this is the same pattern repeating itself, and Pakistan has been in the self denial mode right since. Well, I'm you can say in a matter man, of speaking about two weeks now, because when when the Uri incident took place, they kept on saying there's some locals who have done it. Now something now something else has taken place. Our 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 crossing over and teaching them a lesson. Then they're still in self denial mode, saying that only two soldiers were killed and nothing of the sort happened. They've taken some press parties to it and gone to the UN and so on. So it's very very important that we play up these incidents of, of Pakistan continuing right. to be in, a, be in a mood to to harm us and to and to to teach us a lesson which they're trying to do. And I believe there have been three or four other incidents along the border on, on the NOC in Kashmir today. Hmm. Uh, right, sir, I'd also like to get your perspective on uh, uh, the uh, so phone call between have... Doval and Sartaj Aziz. Uh, how do you see that? Both of these uh, gentlemen are seen as hawks uh, in their uh, respective countries. And now, of course, there is an NSA channel of communication. They've had that talk uh, to uh, uh, calm down the tensions on the border. Uh, how would you analyze that, sir, this interaction between Aziz and Doval? Look, it's like this. First of all, I've just heard something about it. Now, you've just confirmed it. But till now, uh, I, I, I would have imagined that this would have come out in the press. But anyway, let's assume that they are meeting. And uh, now there are two views on this. One is that uh, the, the military advisors, the national security advisors meeting will, may help. I'm not saying it will help. It may help defuse the tension along the border. Secondly, others who are who have a different interpretation may say that, or are likely to say that this is also resorting to talks in some form or the other, which we have said we will not indulge in until Pakistan agrees to discuss terrorism first. Now, if, if the world and the Janjua talks are going to center around terrorism, in, in addition to, in the process, decreasing the tension along the NOC, then I'm all for it. Otherwise, if it is not, then frankly, uh, we'd like some more explanation on this, some more details about this then, as to why exactly at this particular, why the timing. Sure, sir. And, uh, why the timing? That's uh, uh, a good question. Let me go back to Colonel Sharma. Uh, Colonel Sharma, uh, would you say that uh, the noises that we're hearing from Pakistan when they're trying to uh, say that there has been no surgical strike and India may have tried to hit us, but we uh, are, are not hurting. This is deception. Are they preparing for something worse? Um, yeah, Anshal, I think that, that, that's a good question and uh, not quite related to uh, what happened in Baramula last night, if you ask me uh, frankly. Um, yes, the posturing has been that nothing has happened. The, a state of deniability, something that we spoke about earlier that uh, Pakistan will definitely deny uh, that anything of this nature happened because it puts them in a very awkward situation if they say yes or they say no. Um, having said that, I think uh, Pakistan would definitely be smarting and as we are talking to each other right now, I think Pakistan, the deep state as, uh, as we call it, is working out their options. I don't think uh, escalation along the LC of the nature that we saw uh, today, uh, this terrorist attack that we saw last night, I don't think that's the kind of reaction that Pakistan is going to be satisfied with. I think there is more to come. There is more to come. And in that sense, uh, our armies are preparing they say, for any eventuality. Uh, let me go back to uh, Mr. Narendra Nath again, the diplomat on the panel. Uh, sir, would you say that uh, uh, India is prepared for both eventualities? And uh, how should India really be on a diplomatic stage playing this? How should India appear still like the earnest party of the two? You know, as far as uh, doing something spectacular from their point of view, within India is concerned, one of the one of the big cities. I think one can't one can't prevent it a hundred percent, 
but one can minimize the damage by being extra alert. Now, certainly the big metropolitan cities, I, I'm feeling uh, there's, a, there's an enormous degree of alert. But this alert, this mm. alert state of affairs should last for a long time. What happens normally is it lasts for a few days, then things begin to slacken, which is partly human nature also. You can't, you can't maintain the same tempo or the same pace all the time. So this is one thing. Along crossing the international border is a little more, little more doubtful because I think we are better prepared there. And uh, we've taken the suitable measures, removed the uh, villagers within 10 kilometers, mm. with, within 10 kilometers to safer hideouts. And I think they will not try that. And, and uh, uh, in any case, we have to be extremely alert, even more alert there, especially now that there'll be nobody there, hardly, hardly anybody staying there. Right from Kutch to Kargil, I would say, we have to ex maintain high alert there. In a manner of speaking, it's probably easier for our army to be on high, on high alert along the border at LOC than, to be on high, than despite being on high alert in the cities to prevent some sort of a mishap though we can afford to minimize it and help to minimize it. So this is what I keep in mind. Because I keep on I keep right. on repeating to myself the words of Hafiz Said. He, he's, the, he's not an army man. He can't come with his holes and cross the border. He even if he gets firing from the Pakistan side to help him. But he is, from his point of view, quite adept at this kind of terror. And he would naturally resort to that first. At best you can say, or at best you can say, that he'd probably resort to that first. If that, that doesn't pay dividends, then the army will think of other measures and to their army to counter, to, to bolster their image. I think I'd put it that way also. Right. I would not rule out that possibility. Colonel Sharma, do you think that India sort of in that sense loses out because, uh, because India does not have the non-conventional tools that Pakistan's deep establishment uh, uses at will? No, Anshal, I, I, I think uh, to a certain extent uh, it's India who, who uh, changed the paradigm by going across the LC and striking uh, at will at the targets that we always wanted to strike at and give them a very clear message. Um, what happens next? Uh, it's very difficult to say, like I, like I said, I'm sure they're working out their options. So one could be sleeper cells, something of the nature that we saw last night. Maybe Hafiz Said got into uh, action and activated some of them. There could be more such incidents. Some of these jihadis uh, trying to um, inflict damage. There could be fifth columnists within the country. We have plenty of them. There could be a border action team, which uh, Pakistanis do believe in. It could be that. Or it could be something a little more spectacular. Uh, very difficult to... Uh, uh, make a, an accurate mm. guess of what's going to happen, but I think we are fairly well prepared. Um, it's not Hafiz Saeed who bothers me too much. Actually, I'm more concerned about what um, the two Sharifs are going to come up with, uh, because I'm sure they are smarting deep, with, deep inside. They are smarting, and they must be thinking of doing something to uh, teach us. I, I'm not looking at a full-fledged conventional war. I don't think it's in the interest of uh, either of the two countries. So that's something that we we'll right. both avoid. But some sort of a calibrated response from their side may be expected. All right, sir, let's bring in a last word from both our guests. Colonel Sharma, to you first. Do you think it's going to be, you've already said that you don't expect a full-fledged war, but do you think that their response is going to be more in terms of a terror strike on India? And in that sense, how do we protect our cities? We can protect our borders. We've got a professional army. But how do we protect our cities? Or would it be, some, uh, uh, would it be another uh, uh, effort by Pakistan's deep establishment to disturb peace here? I'll go with the same question to uh, the diplomat Narendra Nath. But first, Colonel Sharma, have the final say. Okay, I think, uh, Anjali, your appreciation uh, is quite right when you say that we, we are relatively safe at the border and along the line of control where we've got our professional army and the, uh, and the Air Force and the Navy backing us up. It's the, the soft spot is uh, inside, uh, say, the metros and stuff. Uh, what we can do, and I'm sure uh, we already at it, is uh, bust these and uh, sleeper cells th that exist, weed them out, and, and you know, let there be no let up. Now, normal life has to go on, it must go on, but the interagencies and the police and all the other agencies responsible for internal security must remain on a state of high alert and weed out as much as we can. Um, the rest of it, I think we will respond to it when it happens. Right, sir. 
Let me go across to Narendra Nath Nasa. Your final uh, word Same tonight on you. Beyond. What would you say? Yes. No, uh, I, I would agree with what the Colonel has said. I mean, I mean, as I said earlier also, that something that happens within Indian Territory, because, you know, they have steeper cells, and I'm sorry to say that, you know, they also have a lot of uh, what, what we call, uh, what your channel and other channels call peace sticks here. Now, all this put together, they can build up quite an image here and quite a post. So sleeper cells have to be taken care of. And in, in between, we make sure that uh, this coming visitors from Pakistan are not permitted, no visas are granted. I, I'm, I'm, I don't mind at all the visas are stopped to Pakistanis. Uh, we, can, they can do, uh, we can do without them here. And uh, they will not be able to do, mm. they, they love coming to India, I know that. But they, they will be very happy if they're, if they're not allowed to come here. But we have to stop that also. So we'll have to be very careful, and we must monitor their embassy activities, their high commission activities, and be in more closely. Especially see if anybody still goes in and goes out too much. So you're saying that take all necessary actions that one must at such time. Uh, that just goes on to uh, show the uh, level of anxiety that is prevailing uh, even amongst people who know the relationship of India and Pakistan better than the layman, better than you and I. And I can tell you here from uh, the ground here in Kashmir that the army is leaving no stone unturned in order uh, uh, for them to be absolutely prepared. And that is one of the reasons they're not taking, Indian army is not taking any journalist uh, uh, on the LOC right now because uh, well, that's not the stuff they would want the media to see. They are at the moment trying to avoid any such situation uh, happening. What would happen? Nobody knows. But the anxiety in itself is not a good sign. And one certainly hopes that karma minds will prevail and things will get better. Nonetheless, uh, India must be prepared for any eventuality, just like Pakistan is preparing itself on the other side of the border.